Okay, good morning. Quick update um, and explanation. Here is the guts of my drive system that I'm working on. Um, it looks a lot different than most other drive systems out there. If it didn't look much different, I probably wouldn't be doing it because I like to do things differently. Um, don't know if it's better yet. Um, there's some concepts, there's some features of it that I haven't seen in other ones yet, but uh, so maybe they'll have some features in here that are kind of cool. Um, okay, this is the drivetrain. This is, if you've seen my other videos, this box here is where the motor is going to live. There's going to be a motor in here, sit down towards the bottom. There's also the head gimbal sits in there, um, rigidly attached across here, and then it swings around and moves in all sorts of crazy ways in there. And this, this is how it attaches to the sphere, okay? On this side and on this side, okay? So unlike most other systems that have axles, I'm not putting my motors here. There's no moving shaft here. This, this is a hub. These are hubs. So they're going to be rigid. So notice I hold one of these. Imagine I'm holding the ball. This is the carriage that's, right? It's, there's four bearings in there. And you notice this one doesn't even start to spin right away because bearings are cool. Um, so the carriage in there has all the weight and things, and it can rotate easily around those bearings. Now, these are big one-inch aluminum tubes. Um, they may be stainless steel in the final version. I want to get the flanged version that will hold it more in place in here. And the reason for these big tubes is these guys here, uh, slip rings. Okay, so I want to be able to power the BB-8 from the, um, <clears throat> the outside. And uh, I also want to have cool features on the panels. So that requires transmitting power and signal across this spinning joint. Now, one of the things I've discovered about aluminum one-inch rods at this point, from, from Servo City at least, is that they're slightly, the inside diameter is not 22, it's 21. Um, the stainless steel version is 22. It says the flanged versions are 22, so I'm hoping... Uh, I'm sure it'll work out. I, I, I sent some emails to Servo City to, to, to talk to them about it. But anyway, here's the idea. Um, <clears throat> if this sits in there, which it will in the in the real version, and I hold it steady, I'm going to kind of just hold it on the bottom like that, you'll see that this freely rotates, right? So this would be attached to the actual batteries and stuff. And uh, getting that? And the other part down here is not rotating at all, and that's where my uh, charging happens, and uh, there'll be another one on the opposite side that's just a, a lighter weight, lighter gauge wire, but more conductors for things like signal, I squared C, um, <clears throat> uh, and so on. All right, so yeah, this is the hub. Now, why why am I doing it this way? Um, most other ones, you have the motors out here, and they attach to the to thing. If, you, if you've ever been on a Ferris wheel or the pirate ship ride at an amusement park, um, you've seen, you've been on something that relies on this. So I know it's a tried and true method. You have these, these hubs uh, on the side. Normally these would go all the way straight to the ground. And then you have your, your ship in the middle that goes, whoa, and drives you, you know, makes you nauseous. Now, the cool thing, one of the cool things about here is imagine this is attached to the sphere. This is rigid with regards to the sphere. So anything I want to attach to the sphere, whether that's flip out panels or whatever, can rigidly mount to this. They're not going to get knocked by it, right? That's the problem with most of them. The, 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 uh, the move, the, there's lots of stuff moving and spinning in here that's going to hit into the drive system. I'm trying to keep it, you know, as keep all the moving parts towards the center, you know, where the head is and so on. And it, they, they may tip out a little bit, but they're never going to get all the way to this area. So I can do some, some kind of cool things here. Now, um, I'm likely to have two versions that hopefully eventually you'll be able to build, or I'll, I'll be building both versions based on this, and the big difference is going to be how much movement they allow, right? So the performance version, the one that's going to be the dragster version, um, may very well allow lot for lots of swing in the pendulums down here and the much bigger platter and so on, and they're going to swing out and you use up more of the area out here. Um, the more compact version is going to be the one that relies more on my more compact cylinders spinning around in the, in the split flywheel and so on. They're going to allow for a lot more room on the sides, right? So right now, a minimum you're going to get is this, but if you if you limit your motion to this, you get lots and lots of room on the sides. Now, um, the other potentially cool thing is that uh, most systems, uh, these you, everyone wants to, to match the stage droid, which means 
the axle or the hubs attach on the triangles on the side. Now, I'm building with this in mind that, yeah, the default will be that way, and probably, probably for like the carry sphere, I'm working with carry really closely with on this one. Um, it attaches onto his mounting points. It's gonna be like really nice, and maybe even these uh, these threaded rods or whatever they wind up being. Uh, yeah, it's not all plastic. These are like easily available at Home Depot for now. Um, they would actually screw into the side, so they bolt directly into the side, maybe threaded inserts, or maybe it's just a hole that gets put through. So they'll mount real firmly to the side of the triangles. But um, in a future version, what I want to do is offset this from the triangles. So BB-8's motion would be a little bit, it would look a little bit more wobbly with regards to the ball because it wouldn't be centered on a triangle. And the cool thing is, imagine this is going to be, these, are, these probably won't be as long in the final version. They may be clipped down, you know, some, to just whatever they need to be to, to give it support here and I'll build it out. So that gives you a good six inches of clearance here. If I offset that, put a do door panel in front of it, shoot my, right, thumbs up, right back in. Um, so I can do it really screen accurately is the idea. It doesn't have to fold. It'll actually shoot straight out because I'll have that, you know, the depth I need to do it. You know, it may be a, a two-part mechanism, but at least it'll be a sliding mechanism like the movie has. Um, the other cool thing about that is it would shoot out right from the center of the axis. So even if it's shot out, say it shoots out, gives you the thumb, still can spin, right? So imagine having a rolling droid with its thumb sticking out. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so anyway, that's the latest plan on this. Uh, if you want to see me keep making progress, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, join the Rolling Robots group, not the Rolling Robots page, which is a, a first LEGO League uh, or a first uh, Robotics League. So Rolling Robots, the group, uh, anyone can view, view it, uh, join it if you want to get notifications. Uh, I may be uh, probably going to launch a Patreon kind of thing if you want to help, um, you know, in terms of because I'm, I'm like winding up ordering a lot of things from, from uh, uh, Servo City and, and uh, uh, various places at this point. And uh, if you want to see, oh, hopefully, you know, at the end, you, you all win because I you know, plan on, on releasing this so that you don't have to go through the same all the same trial and error. But maybe you can help me with some of the trial and error stuff. Um, OK, so that's that's the latest. Take care. Um, yeah, the bearings, there's four bearings in there. They're about eight bucks a piece. Uh, the, the shafts are actually not all that expensive. They're, they're like, I think even the stainless version would be five bucks. These are like two bucks a piece. Um, so I'm trying to keep the cost down, keep it 3D printable. Um, you don't need CNC necessarily, but you could definitely CNC some parts. Look for more stuff in the future. Take care. Bye.